Bean, the beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you pay to Samsung. Last week, Samsung unveiled their newest wireless earbuds, the Samsung Galaxy Buds Live. These buds sport a rather unique design that is a pretty significant departure from their previous earbuds. Yes, they look like beans. But how well does this new and unique design actually hold up compared to the competition? Well, we've been using them since we got them on Friday, and the little package has its ups and downs. Just for full disclosure, we purchased this product with our own money. This video contains our own opinions and is in no way sponsored by Samsung or any other third party. Let's start with the most decisive point about the Buds Live, their shape. Samsung purports that the design was made with long-term comfort in mind so you can wear them all day without needing to adjust them. Instead of sliding into the ear canal like the previous Samsung Buds, instead they sit outside it, much like the standard AirPods do. While we still found ourselves adjusting them from time to time, we did find the comfort factor on par with the previous Buds. To folks who might have trouble with in-ear Buds, this might make the Buds live and we are really struggling not to call them ear beans. The most comfortable pick of the two, especially since they don't have a spoke sticking out of them like the AirPods or any similar AirPod knockoffs do. They do sit nice and compact with the ear, and we found we've been able to maintain comfort while lying down with them since they don't stick out as much. They seem to maintain secure in the ear as well, Despite jumping up and down and shaking our head about, we weren't able to get them to pop out. They do come with the larger wingtip included in the box, but we've tried both sides and we didn't really notice any difference in fit between the two. But your mileage may vary depending on the size of your own ears. This design does have its downsides though, since it doesn't make a seal with the air canal does allow outside sound to bleed through. But given the name, Buds Live, that might actually be the point. This rings to us with the same sort of strategy that the Microsoft Surface Buds were trying for. Something you can use to control your device, listen to music and the like, but without separating yourself from the surroundings. While the previous Buds and the Buds Plus had an ambient sound pass through feature, which used the microphones to pipe outside sounds into the speakers. Um, it's very much uh, had its limitations. Didn't always work the best. Samsung did try to include a form of active noise cancellation with the beans. Uh, we mean the Buds Live. And it does work. It drowns out a lot of the low end white noise, but Samsung seems to have purposely only targeted a certain spectrum of sound wavelengths to cancel out. So even with the feature on, you'll still hear people talking around you, or in our case, with our window banger air conditioner here. It'll drown out the hum of the fans, but we still kind of hear the motor going while the ANC is on. It's a bit of a double-edged sword. If you're a frequent commuter, need to like listen out for see when a subway or bus calls out the stop that you need to get out on or if you're in an office job where you need to listen for people to call out your name something like that then this is actually really great but if you want full immersion no external interruptions then these might not be the best option for you of course, depending on how loud you pump your music up to, it can kind of offset the ambient noise. 
which is our clean little segue into the sound quality itself. For on earbuds, these beans sound amazing. For what they are, anyhow. The sound is full, and it can be slightly tuned with the Samsung wearable app, much in the same way that the previous Samsung Buds could. Even more shocking, they have strong bass to them, even managing to stuff a full bass vent into such a tiny package. Now, we're not 100% sure we'd say they sound head over heels better than the previous Buds or Buds Plus, but the fact that we'd even consider them to sound as good as in-ears is a testament to just how impressive Samsung has done with the live beans. Uh, excuse us. Uh, the Buds Live. They may not have the best sound on the market, but for non-in-ears, the kind that just sit on the outside, they sound good and should suit most people's audio needs. We are testing the audio quality of the Samsung Bud Y microphone. Um, let us know what you think of the ear beams. How do they sound when someone is talking into them? And here's a recording with a little bit less background noise in the room. This is to test out mainly to see the night and day difference between, you know, a noisy environment and how it picks up there, and any more silent environment and how it picks up here. Jumping back to the software sides of things, much of the customization on offer with the Buds Live is the same as the Buds and the Buds Plus. The seamless device switching is back, so you can bounce your beans between your PC, your phone, your tablet, whatever, with just the press of a button. You can still have your Buds read notifications allowed. There's still an earbud locator function, just in case you misplace them. And you can still only customize the touch and hold part of the touch commands. This time though, you can opt to have the touch and hold toggle the noise cancellation, uh, the replacement for the ambient pass through your smartphone assistant, and volume up or volume down. New to come alongside the Buds Live, though we're pretty sure this is also coming to the other Samsung Buds as well. You can also now start Spotify with the Buds. For the voice assistant, there is an always listen slash auto voice wake up special feature thing, specifically if you're using Bixby, Samsung's assistant. Uh, given we kind of, like, hacked our S10e to disable Bixby, we didn't really have any opportunity to test those. In the lab's experimental features section, there's also a low latency gaming mode. Um, though this might just be us, but we didn't really notice much of a difference between latency with it on or off. At least not with Ankai Impact 3 or YouTube, anyhow. There's also an ambient sound mode for what they say is pressure relief. But since we don't typically have that issue with the stuffy feeling of congestion in our ears, turning it on or off didn't have any kind of a noticeable difference for us. We are really disappointed to see Samsung didn't keep the swipe gestures from the Buds Plus, though. Even though that was an experimental feature with those as well, it would have been nice to see that expanded upon rather than just dropped entirely. Perhaps the touch sensor is just too small in the Buds Live to be able to even consider trying those options, but it's disappointing nonetheless. Additionally disappointing is the reduction in battery life. The Buds Plus supported 11 hours per charge, doubling to 22 with the case, and even the regular Samsung Buds still had roughly a 6 to 7 hour span that extended to about 12 with the case. The Buds Live support between 5.5 with noise cancellation and the Bixby voice wake up on, and about eight hours with just everything off, straight playing music.
we found with just the noise cancellation on, that we'd be getting less than the projected six hours. So your mileage might vary. And if that's indicative of the rest of the package, it's a disappointing drop. That said, the battery life with the case goes between 20 hours and 29 hours, depending on what features you have on or off. So the big improvement with battery life comes in the case more so than the buds themselves. Thankfully, the case still supports USB-C and wireless charging, and both the case and the beans have an even faster quick charge than the previous two generations of buds. So keeping them topped off should be easy, even if you happen to be topping them off a little more often than previously. The color selection is also reduced, though the options on selection are pretty great. We opted for the black ones, Mystic Black, but we hope the Mystic Bronze become a staple Samsung color going forward, as they would look really chic with a matching phone. Ours happens to be blue, so we stuck with the black. What we do hope is that they return to the matte finish over the gloss, though, since the gloss finish happens to pick up fingerprints really easily. Lots of them. So, final thoughts. The Buds Live Ear Beans are really good. We can't recommend them to everyone, though. A lot of it will come down to just how much you value isolation and noise cancellation. If you need the most isolation possible, these probably would be a pass for you, as they don't even come close to something like the Sony or Bose offer. Heck, even the Buds and Buds Plus isolate a little bit better than these, even when the beans have their ANC active. But if you're in an environment where you don't want full isolation, or comfort is like your primary concern, or you just, for some reason, in-ears bug you way too much, then at $160, these Buds are a solid general pick for especially for the price range. Other on-ear options just don't compare in terms of the sound quality or the comfort. And in terms of the Samsung lineup, these feel like the on-ear option to what the Buds Plus are. Kind of like a reverse of the AirPods and the AirPods Pro. And of course, at a much lower price than either of those. Me and the boys at 2 a.m. looking for B. They are called Galaxy Buds Live. You. Thank you.